Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Chapter 2, and Marge's Big Mistake. Harry went right down to breakfast the subsequent morning to find the three Dursleys already sitting across the kitchen table. They had been looking up brand new television, a welcome domestic for the summer season present for Dudley, who had been complaining loudly about the lengthy stroll between the fridge and the TV in the residing room. Dudley had spent most of the summer in the kitchen, his piggy little eyes constant at the display screen and his five chins wobbling as he ate continually. Harry sat down between Dudley and Uncle Vernon, a huge, beefy man with very little neck and loads of mustache. Far from wishing Harry a happy birthday, not one of the Dursleys made any signal that that they had noticed Harry enter the room. However, Harry changed into a long way too used to this to care. He helped himself to a chunk of toast after which appeared up at the reporter at the television who became halfway through a document on an escaped convict. The general public is warned that black is armed and extraordinarily risky. A special warm line has been installation, and any setting of black must be suggested without delay. No need to tell us he's no correct, snorted Uncle Vernon, staring over the pinnacle of his newspaper at the prisoner, take a look at the nation of him. Filthy layabout. Look at his hair. He shot an unpleasant look sideways at Harry, whose untidy hair had usually been a supply of wonderful annoyance to Uncle Vernon. Compared to the person on the television, but whose gone face becomes surrounded with the aid of a disheveled elbow period tango, Harry felt thoroughly groomed indeed. The reporter had reappeared. The Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will announce this day's dangle on. Bart Uncle Vernon, staring furiously on the reporter. You didn't inform us wherein that many eggs escaped from. What use is that? Lunatic may be coming up the street proper now. And Petunia, who turned into bony and horse confronted, whipped round and peered intently out of the kitchen window. Harry knew and Petunia would truly Love to be the one to name the recent line number. She changed into the nosiest woman inside the world and spent most of her existence spying at the uninteresting. Regulation abiding friends, whilst will they study, stated Uncle Vernon, pounding the table along with his large red fist, that hanging's the handiest way to deal with those human beings. Very true, said Aunt Petunia who become nevertheless squinting into next doors. Runner beans. Uncle Vernon drained his teacup, glanced at his watch, and added, I would. Hire be off in a minute, Petunia. Marge's educate gets in at ten. Harry, whose mind were upstairs with the broomstick servicing. Kate, was added returned to earth with an ugly bump. And March. He blurted out. Sh, she's no longer coming right here, is she? And March changed into Uncle Vernon's sister, even though she turned into no longer a blood relative of Harry's, whose mom had been Aunt Petunia's sister. He were compelled to call her and all his existence. And March lived within the yo s a in a residence with a large garden in which she bred bulldogs. She. Failed to regularly laugh at private pressure due to the fact she couldn't bear to leave. Her treasured dogs, however each of her visits stood out horribly vividly in Harry's mind. At Dudley's fifth birthday celebration, and Margot had whacked Harry around the shins along with her walking stick with prevent him from beating Dudley at musical statues. A few years later, she had turned up at Christmas with a computerized robot for Dudley and a field of dog biscuits for Harry. Oh! Her remaining visit, the 12 months earlier than Harry commenced at Hogwarts, Harry had by accident trodden on the tail of her preferred canine. Reaper had chased Harry out into the lawn and up a tree, and Aunt March had refused to 
name him both until past midnight. The memory of this incident nevertheless delivered tears of laughter to Dudley's eyes. Marju be here for per week, Uncle Vernon tousled, eleven and whilst we are on the situation he pointed a fat finger threateningly at Harry We Want to get some matters instantly before I'm going and accumulate her. Dudley smirked and withdrew his gaze from the television. Watching Harry being bullied by way of Uncle Vernon changed into Dudley's favorite shape of leisure. First off, growled Uncle Vernon, you hold a civil tongue to your head while you speak me to March. All right, said Harry bitterly. If she does well, she speak me to me. Secondly, stated Uncle Vernon, appearing as though he had no longer heard Harry's. Respond, as Marge doesn't understand whatever about your abnormality, I don't need any any funny stuff at the same time as she's here. You behave yourself, were given me. I can if she does, said Harry through gritted teeth. And thirdly, said Uncle Vernon, his suggest little as now slits in his super pink face. We've got a vast march you at 10th Street. Brutus is relaxed. Center for incurably crooked boys. What? Harry yelled. And you will be sticking to that tail. Boy, or there will be hassle, spat. Uncle Vernon. Harry sat there, white confronted and furious, observing Uncle Vernon, hardly capable of agree with it. And March coming for a week long visit it was the worst birthday present the Desleys had ever given him, inclusive of that pair of Uncle Vernon's antique socks. Properly, Petunia, stated Uncle Vernon, getting heavily to his FT, I will be off to the station, then. Want to return along for the journey, Dudders? No, said Dudley, whose interest had lured back to the TV now. That Uncle Vernon had finished threatening Harry. That is were given to make himself smart for his auntie, said Aunt Petunia, smoothing Dudley's thick blonde hair. Mummy's offered him the adorable new bow tie. Uncle Vernon clapped Dudley on his porky shoulder. See you in a chunk, then, he stated, and he left the kitchen. Harry, who had been sitting in a form of horrified trance, had an unexpected concept. Abandoning his toast, he got speedy to his toes and followed Uncle Vernon to the, the front door. Uncle Vernon changed into pulling on his vehicle coat. I am no longer taking you, he snarled as he turned to peer Harry watching him. Like I desired to come back, said Harry coldly. I want to invite you. Something. Uncle Vernon eyed him suspiciously. Seven G E years at hot at my school are allowed to go to the village. From time to time said Harry. So, snapped Uncle Vernon, taking his vehicle keys from a hook subsequent to the door. I want you to sign the permission sheet, said Harry in a hurry. And why need to I do this? Sneered Uncle Vernon, properly, said Harry, selecting his words carefully, it will likely be tough paintings, pretending to end March I visit that street. What's it? St. Brutus's secure middle for incurably crooked boys. Bellowed uncle. Vernon, and Harry become pleased to hear a specific notice of panic in uncle. Vernon's voice, precisely, said Harry, looking evenly up into uncle Vernon's large, red face, it is plenty to recollect. I should make it sound. Convincing. May not I? What if I by accident allow something slip? you get the stuffing knocked out of you, might not you? Roared Uncle. Vernon, advancing on Harry together with his fist raised. However Harry stood his floor. Knocking the stuffing out of me may not make and March forget about what I may want to inform her, he said grimly. Uncle Vernon stopped, his fist still raised, his face an unsightly PC, however if you sign my permission shape. Harry went on speedy, I swear. I will consider wherein I'm imagined to pass to school, and I'll act like a mug like I am every day and the whole lot. Harry should inform that Uncle Vernon was questioning it over, even if his 
Enamel had been bared and a vein turned into throbbing in his temple. Proper, he snapped subsequently. I shall review your conduct cautiously. For the duration of Marge's visit. If, on the give up of it, you told the road and store to the tail, I'll signal your ruddy form. He wheeled around, pulled open the front door, and slammed it so hard that one of the little panes of glass at the top fell out. Harry failed to return to the kitchen. He went lower back upstairs to his bedroom. If he become going to act like an actual muggle, he had a start. Now, slowly and unless he accrued up all his gifts and his birthday cards and concealed them below the free floorboard with his homework. Then he went to Hedwig's cage. Arrow regarded to have recovered, he and Hedwig had been both asleep, heads below their wings. Harry said, then poked them. Both conscious. Hedwig, he said gloomily, you will must clean off for a week. Go along with Arrow. Wrong look when you. I will write him a notice, explaining. And do not observe me like that Hedwig's massive amber eyes. Had been reproachful, it's now not my fault. It's the most effective way I will be. Allowed to visit Hogsmeade with Ron and Hermione. Ten minutes later, Arrow and Hedwig, who had a word to Ron certain to her. Leg, soared out of the window and out of sight. Harry, now feeling thoroughly miserable, placed the empty cage away in the cloth cabinet. But Harry did not have lengthy to brood. In subsequent to no time, and Petunia become shrieking up the stairs for Harry to come down and get ready to welcome their visitor. Do something about your hair. And Petunia snapped as he reached the hall. Harry couldn't see the factor of looking to make his hair lie flat. And Marge loved criticizing him, so the untidier he regarded, the happier she might be. All too soon. There was a crunch of gravel outside as Uncle Vernon's car. Paul returned into the driveway, then the clunk of the car doors and footsteps on the long direction. Get the door. And Petunia hissed at Harry. A feeling of brilliant gloom in his belly, Harry pulled the door open. On the brink stood Aunt March. She was much like Uncle Vernon. Large, beefy, and pink faced, she even had a mustache although now not as furry as his. In a single hand she held an sizable suitcase, and tucked. Beneath the other become a vintage and evil-tempered bulldog, where's my daughters? Roared and March, where's my nephew Pooh? Dudley got here waddling down the corridor, his blonde hair plastered flat to his. Fast head, a bow tie simply visible underneath his many chins. And March thrust. The suitcase into Harry's belly, knocking the wind out of him, seized Dudley in a tight one-arm hug, and planted a large kiss on his cheek. Harry knew perfectly properly that Dudley handiest put up with and Marge's hugs, because he became properly paid for it, and sure sufficient, after they broke apart, Dudley had a crisp twenty-pound note clutched in his fat fist. Petunia shouted and Marge, Striding past Harry as even though he changed into a headstand. And March and Aunt Petunia kissed, or alternatively, and March bumped her large jaw in opposition to Aunt Petunia's bony cheekbone. Uncle Vernon now came in, smiling jovially as he shut the door. T. March, he said. And what is going to Reaper take? Reaper may have a few tea out of my saucer, stated Aunt March as all of them proceeded into the kitchen, leaving Harry alone in the hall with the suitcase. However, Harry wasn't complaining, any excuse no longer to be with Aunt. Marge changed into nice by him, so he started to heave the case upstairs into the spare bedroom, taking so long as he could. By the point he got again to the kitchen, and Marge were provided with tea and fruitcake and Reaper changed into lapping noisily inside the corner. Harry saw Aunt Petunia wins barely as specks of tea and drew flat. Her clean floor. Aunt Petunia hated animals, who is looking after the other puppies, 
March. Uncle Vernon requested. Oh, I've got Colonel Fobster managing them, boomed Aunt March. He is retired now, desirable for him to have something to do. However, I couldn't go away. Poor antique Reaper. He pines if he is far away from me. Reaper started to growl again as Harry sat down. This directed Aunt March's interest to Harry for the primary time. So, she barked, nevertheless here, are you? Sure, said Harry, don't you are saying sure in that ungossomeful tone, and Marge growled, it is. Damn accurate of Vernon and Petunia to hold you. Would not have carried out it. Myself. You'd have long gone straight to an orphanage if you'd been dumped on. My doorstep. Harry became bursting to mention that he as an alternative life in an orphanage then. With the Desleys, however the idea of the Hogsmeade FORM stopped him. He forced his face into a painful smile, do not you smirk at me. Boom and march, I will see you haven't progressed due to the fact I closely noticed you. I was hoping faculty could knock a few manners into you. She took a large gulp of tea, wiped her mustache, and said, in which is it that you sent him, once more, Vernon? S.T. Brutuses, said Uncle Vernon directly. It is A292709-9721-9517B03B63B6349. Group for Hopeless Cases. I see, said Aunt March. Do they use the cane at street? Brutuses, but... She barked across the desk. E.R. Uncle Vernon nodded curtly in the back of Aunt Marge's again. Sure, stated Harry. Then, feeling he might as nicely do the component nicely, he introduced, all the time. Terrific, stated Aunt Marge. I won't have this namby-pamby. Wishy-washy nonsense approximately no longer hitting folks who deserve it. A great... Freshing is what is needed in 99 cases out of a 100. Have you been crushed frequently? Oh, yeah, said Harry, masses of times. And Marge narrowed her eyes. I nonetheless do not like your tone, boy, she said. If you could talk of your beatings in that informal way, they honestly aren't hitting you tough. Enough. Petunia, I'd write if I were you. Make it clean which you approve. The usage of severe pressure on this boy's case. Perhaps Uncle Vernon become involved that Harry might forget their good deal. Anyhow, he modified the challenge all of a sudden. Heard the news this morning, March. What about that escaped prisoner? Eh? As Aunt March commenced to make herself at home. Harry caught himself. Questioning nearly longingly of lifestyles that range for without her. Uncle, Vernon and Aunt Petunia typically recommended Harry to laugh out in their manner, which Harry changed into best too glad to do. And March, on the other hand, desired Harry beneath her eye at all times, in order that she ought to increase a tips for his development. She extremely joyful in evaluating Harry with Dudley, and took massive pride in buying Dudley expensive affords. Even as obvious as Harry, as although daring him to ask why he hadn't got a gift too. She also kept throwing out dark hints approximately what made Harry such an unsatisfactory person. You mustn't blame yourself for the manner the boys grew to become out, Vernon. She said over lunch on the San Fungi day. If there is something rotten on the inner, there may be not anything anyone can do about it. Harry tried to pay attention on his foot, however his fingers shook and his face became beginning to burn with anger. Keep in mind the shape, he instructed himself. Reflect on consideration on Hogsmeade. Do not say something. Don't upward thrust. Aunt Marge reached for her glass of wine. It's one of the fundamental policies of breeding, she said. You see it all of the time with dogs. If there is something wrong with the bitch, there'll be something incorrect with the domestic dog. At that second, the wine glass and Marge became holding exploded in her. 
hand. Shards of glass flew in every course and Aunt March sputtered. Anne blinked, her superb ruddy face dripping. March! squealed Aunt Petunia. March, are you all right? Not to worry, grunted Aunt March, mopping her face with her napkin, she had squeezed it too hard. Did the same thing at Colonel Foxter's. The alternative day. No one to fuss, Petunia, I have a totally company grip. However, Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon had been each searching at Harry. Suspiciously, so he determined he'd better skip dessert and escape from the desk as soon as he could. Outdoor in the corridor, he leaned against the wall, breathing deeply ahead. Been a long term due to the fact he'd lost manage and made something explode. He could not find the money for to permit it appear once more. The Hogsmeade form wasn't the most effective issue at stake if he carried on like that, he'd be in trouble. With the Ministry of Magic, Harry turned into nonetheless an underage wizard, and he became forbidden by wizard law to do magic outdoor college. His document wasn't precisely smooth both. Best. Last summer time he'd gotten an reputable warning that had stated quite virtually that if the ministry got wind of any greater magic in private part, Harry might face expulsion from Hogwarts. He heard the Deathless leaving the table and hurried upstairs out of the manor. Harry got through the following Sundays by forcing himself to consider his diet of do-it-yourself broom care every time and March started out on him. This labored pretty well, though it appeared to present him a glazed look, due to the fact and March began voicing the opinion that he changed into, mentally, subnormal. At last, at lengthy closing, the final night of March's stay arrived. And Petunia cooked an elaborate dinner and Uncle Vernon uncorked numerous bottles of wine. They got all of the manor through the soup and the salmon without a single mention of Harry's faults, all through the lemon meringue pie, Uncle. Vernon bored them a with a protracted talk approximately Granny's history-making business enterprise. Then Aunt Petunia made coffee and Uncle Vernon brought out a bottle of brandy. Am I able to tempt you, March? And March had already had pretty a whole lot of wine. Her huge face was very red, only a small one. Then, she chuckled, a piece greater than that. And a bit greater. That's the ticket. Dudley turned into consuming his fourth slice of pie. And Petunia was sipping. Espresso along with her little finger protruding. Harry honestly desired to disappear into his bedroom, but he met Uncle Vernon's angry little eyes and knew he might should sit down it out. Ah, oh, stated Aunt March, smacking her lips and putting the empty brandy. Glass bed paddle, exceptional nash, Petunia. It is typically only a fry up. For me of a night time, with twelve dogs to look after. She burped. Richly and patted her notable tweed belly. Pardon me. However, I do want to see a wholesome sized boy. She went on, winking at Dudley. You may be a proper sized man, Dudders. Like your father. Sure, I will have a niche extra. Brandy, Vernon. Now, this one right here. She jerked her head at Harry, who felt his stomach clench. The dad, he concept quick. This ones were given an average, runty look about him. You get that with puppies. I had Colonel Foxter drawn one last twelve months. Ready little issue it was weak. Underbred. Harry became looking to remember page twelve of his ebook. A attraction to treatment. Reluctant reversers, all of it comes right down to blood, as I was saying the other day. Awful blood will out. Now, I'm saying not anything in opposition to your own family, Petunia she patted and Petunia's bony hand along with her shovel-like one, however your sister become an awful egg. They flip up inside the great households. Then, she ran off with a wastrel and right here's the end result right in front of us. Harry become observing his plate, 
a humorous ringing in his ears. Draw close your broom firmly by using the tail, he notioned. But he could not do not forget what got here. Next. And Marge's voice appeared to be dull into him like considered one of uncle. Vernon's drills. This potter. Five, said Aunt Marge loudly, seizing the brandy bottle and splashing more into her glass than over the tablecloth. You never told me what he did. Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia had been searching extraordinarily disturbing. Dudley had even seemed up from his pie to gape at his parents. He didn't paintings, said Uncle Vernon, with half of a glance at Harry. Unemployed. As I predicted, said Aunt March, taking a huge sweep of brandy and wiping her chin on her sleeve. A no account, desirable for nothing, lazy. Scrounger who? He become no longer, stated Harry all of a sudden. The table went very quiet. Harry was shaking all over. He had in no way felt so indignant in his life. Greater brandy, yelled Uncle Vernon, who had long gone very white. He emptied the bottle into Aunt Marge's glass. You, but he twisted up at Harry. Pass to mattress. Move on. No, Vernon, he cupped Aunt Marge, preserving up a hand, her tiny black shirt. As constant on Harry's, move on, Bob, pass on. Happy with your dad and mom, are you? They cross and get themselves killed in a car crash, inebriated, I expect. They didn't die in an automobile crash, said Harry, who observed himself on his toes. They died in a car crash, you nasty little liar, and left you to be a burden on their respectable, hardworking loved ones. Screamed and March, swelling with fury, you are an insolent, and exceptional for little. However, and March suddenly stopped talking. For a moment, it appeared as, even though words had failed her, she seemed to be swelling with inexpressible anger. However, the swelling didn't forestall. Her wonderful red face started out to extend, her tiny eyes bulged, and her mouth stretched too. Tightly for speech subsequent RD, numerous buttons had simply burst from her tweed jacket and pinned off the walls she became inflating like a large balloon, her belly bursting free of her tweed waistband, each of her hands blowing up like a salami, March, yelled Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia together as Aunt Marge's whole body began to upward push off her chair towards the ceiling. She was totally round, now like an enormous live buoy with piggy eyes, and her fingers and toes caught out weirdly as she drifted up into the air, making apoplectic popping noises. Reaper came skidding into the room, barking madly. No. Uncle Vernon ceased considered one of Marge's FT and attempted to tuck her down once more, but became nearly lifted from the floor himself. ARD later. Reaper leapt ahead and sank his tooth into Uncle Vernon's leg. Harry tore from the dining room earlier than all people may want to forestall him, heading for the cupboard under the stairs. The cabinet door burst magically, open as he reached it. In seconds, he had hit his trunk to the front door. He sprinted upstairs and threw himself beneath the bed, wrenching up the unfastened floorboard and grabbed the pillowcase complete of his books and birthday provides. He wriggled out, seized Hedwig's empty cage, and dashed to return downstairs to his trunk, just as Uncle Vernon burst out of the dining room, his trouser leg in bloody tatters. Come again, and here. He bellowed. Come again, and put her proper. However, a reckless rage had come over Harry. He kicked his trunk open, pulled out his wand, and pointed it at Uncle Vernon. She deserved it, Harry stated, breathing very rapid. She deserved what? She got. You avoid me. He fumbled in the back of him for the latch on the door. I am going, Harry stated, I've had enough. And within the next second, he became out inside the darkish, quiet street, 
heaving. His heavy trunk at the back of him, Hedwig's cage below his arm, 